Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Al C. Hamilton of John Wesley AME Zion Church in the city of Southfield, Michigan. I am indeed glad to come into your home, automobile, hotel room, or wherever you may be receiving this broadcast. Amen. Because you could have been on any other area of internet. And this morning, we are indeed glad that you've joined us for our worship experience this morning. Let's invite God into the worship experience. Amen. Most gracious and eternal God, our Father, we thank you, O Lord, for this privilege and opportunity, Lord God, to be broadcast, Lord God, not only in Southfield, but throughout the entire nation. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, let your will be done. Your Holy Spirit guide the entire service that someone may be saved. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, beloved, this morning we have with us, amen, a dance ministry team in t uh, called the Anointed Praise Dance Ministry. And they will be dancing to the selection when I am weak. Won't you join them as they dance in Amen this song When I Am Weak, sung by William Murphy.
Praise the name of the Lord. I love it when, amen, we can just have a wonderful time in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, whether through song, preached word, or through dance ministry, amen, all of it to the glory of God. Well, this morning, let us look at our Old and New Testament scripture reading for this morning. Our Old Testament scripture reading comes out of Psalm 62. Again, that is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. Again, Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. And I will be reading from the New International Version. And it reads, Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in exhortation, in, I'm sorry, do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to God. God and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. And you, and you reward everyone according to what they have done. The word of God for the people of God. Let us look now to the New Testament scripture reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not, those who mourn as if they did not, and those who are happy as if they were not, and those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep, those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them. For this world, in its present form, is passing away. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer this morning. I want you to stop what you're doing. I think that, amen, God deserves all of our attention this morning. And so whatever you're doing, stop right now. Let us pause and pray and ask God to come in and to hear us as we pray. This morning, we pray for the family of my cousin, uh, Sheila, who passed away, and her children, uh, Ariane and Rachel and William. We ask that you would just remember them in your prayers this morning, that God will continue to touch and to strengthen each and every one of them. And I'm sure this morning that you have family members that, that uh, amen, need prayer or that is asking for prayer. And so this morning, I want you to bring their name before the Lord. Amen. God knows each one by name, and he calls them by name. Let us go to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We give you thanks and praise, honor, and glory for your goodness and for your grace. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us, Lord, to once again come into the homes, Lord God, of people, Lord, who are seeking a word from you, who, Lord, need direction, who need God guidance, who need an answer, Heavenly Father, to all the problems that are occurring, not just in their lives, but in the world. 
And so, God, we come to no one else other than to you, Father, who is the creator of all things and who knows all things. And so, God, we come this morning, but we also realize in our coming that, Father God, that we're not worthy to stand before you as we are, for we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We have done evil in your sight, Father. You know it all together, our uprise as well as our downsetting. You know, Lord God, where our feet have taken us, and Lord God, what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our mouths have spoken. All these things, Lord God, we know you know. And so we come to you, Lord, asking you to forgive us so that, Lord, our prayer would be heard this morning. Most gracious Father, we come, Lord God, lifting up, Father God, those who are sick and shut in, those, Lord God, who, Father, depend upon others to call upon your name because they're not able to call upon your, uh, your name themselves. So we pray, Heavenly Father, for those that are in the hospital rooms, Lord. We pray this morning, Heavenly Father, for Mrs. Bennett, Lord, Renee Bennett, Father. We ask you to touch her body in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray this morning for Terry Marshall, Heavenly Father, asking you to minister unto her body this morning, Heavenly Father. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to minister, Lord God, to all of the sick and shut in all over the land, Father God. We pray for those that are in hospitals, Lord God, and, and their Father, on ventilators or they're in ICU rooms, oh God. We pray for those that are connected, Lord God, to dialysis machines and, and those family, Father, that are going through radiation treatments and chemotherapy, Father. We pray this morning for those, Lord God, that have, Lord God, perhaps HIV or AIDS this morning. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who have COVID, Lord God, this morning. We ask you in the mighty name of Jesus, touch them, Lord God, with your hand, Lord. Bring them, Lord God, to a point in place, Father God, that they know that, Lord God, you are the one that heals them. You are the one that has restored them, Lord. Dear Father God, I pray this morning that your hand will be upon those, Lord God, who are grieving, who are in sorrow this morning, who have lost a loved one, Lord. We ask you, Lord God, to be with them, Lord God, because they're not able, Lord God, to bid farewell as we have been accustomed to doing in many years. And so, Father, we ask you, Lord God, to place them under your wing. Be with that child, Lord God, who have lost a parent or parents, oh God. Let them know that, Father God, this morning you said that in your word that when my mother and father forsake me that you'll take me up. Be with them, Lord God. And then, Father, we pray for this, our nation, Lord. We pray, oh God, as the new president and vice president has taken office, Lord. We pray this morning that you will be with them, Lord God. Be with all of those, Heavenly Father, that make up the Senate and make up the House of Representatives. Be with, Lord God, those who are governors of our states. Be with those, Lord God, who are mayors. And, and Lord God, be with them all, Heavenly Father. I ask you in the name of Jesus, turn, Lord God, this nation toward you, Father. And now, God, I pause that you might hear the prayers of your people all over the land. Hear our prayer, O Lord, and grant us your peace, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, beloved, it is offering time, and you have an opportunity to, amen, to give into this offering, amen, as the Lord has blessed you, won't you be a blessing this morning? And there are several options that you have available in order to give this morning. If you have the Givelify app, you can simply go to Givelify and look up John Wesley at AME Zion Church in Southfield, Michigan. And then if you have the Cash app, you can use the Cash app tag dollar sign J-A-W-A-M-E-Z 28001. Again, dollar sign J-A-W-A-M-E-Z 28001. If you want to give by way of Zelle this morning, you can use the following email account. It is 28001 J-A-W-A-M-E-Z at gmail.com. Again, 28001-JWAMEZ at gmail.com. If you wish to give by way of credit card or debit card, you can contact our church. Our church number is 248-358-9307, 248-358-9307. And then if you're in the Southfield area and you're near Evergreen Road, 28001 Evergreen, you can stop by the church 
in the uh, parking lot at the door, we have both envelope and a lockbox, a secured lockbox in which you can complete your envelope, place your check, and place it into the secure lockbox. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for every gift that you have blessed us with individually as well as collectively. Now, Father, we have an opportunity to bless the ministry, to give back, Lord God, a portion of what you have given us. Father God, we pray right now over this offering. We ask you, Lord God, to bless every gift and every giver. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, listen, beloved, while you're preparing your offering, amen, and you're preparing yourself for the word of God this morning, there is another selection that we have coming to you that is entitled, In the Midst of It All. Amen. It is sung by Yolanda Adams and it is mined. Amen. This morning through the mind team. So, amen. Sit back and receive this as you prepare yourself for the word of God this morning.
Praise the Lord in the midst of it all. I'm telling you, when we look at what we have been through in the midst of it all, it is so good to know that, that God is in the midst. God is with us in all of it. Amen. I'm glad to know that I'm not walking this road by myself, but the Lord is on this road with me. Well, that leads a, a segue into the message this morning, and our message is taken from Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Amen. Amen. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. With that, beloved, I want to talk to you this morning from the subject entitled, How to Make It Through the Valley. How to Make It Through the Valley. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. How to make it through the valley. Here is a psalm that on many occasions recited in presidential inaugurations. Here is a psalm that known to comfort the brokenhearted during the hour of bereavement. Here is a psalm that scholars can dive into and swim around and never touch the bottom. Here, beloved, is a psalm that a young child can wade in without the fear of drowning. As we explore this 23rd psalm, David begins by illustrating the provision of the Lord, both physical and spiritual, verses 1 through 3. Now, David then describes the protection of the Lord as he travels through dangerous places 
in the presence of his enemies, verses 4 and 5. But moreover, the psalmist ends with an expression of faith and hope in the Lord's pre preservation that God would furnish the goodness and mercy that is needed throughout life so that he may abide in the house of the Lord forever. Verse 6. Now, beloved, if we are going to make it through the valley, we must apply three steps, amen, to make it from the entrance of the valley to the exit. Please consider these following steps. Number one, recognize your surroundings. Number two, rejoice in your suffering. And finally, number three, rely on the Savior. Let us look at first number one, recognize your surroundings. The word of God says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The problem is too many of us fail to face the reality that we are standing in a valley and not walking. And without being interrogated for the truth, we all must confess that you are either in a valley, coming out of a valley, or headed into a valley right now. Yes, Many experience the peaceful and pleasant comforts of the mountaintop of our lives, while others are down in the valley experiencing pain and perplexity. But please, don't laugh at those who are struggling through the valley because yours is just beneath you. In order to identify with your valley, you must recognize your surroundings. What do we mean? After you've recognized your surroundings, you must now face the valley and annihilate its assignment with a biblical spiritual assault. What valley you may be facing this morning, Psalmist says, if it don't look right, keep walking. Don't sit, don't stop, and don't stagger, but keep striving. Remember, while in the valley there are mountains on both sides, and before each mountaintop experiences, there comes a walk in the valley down below. When we reach the mountaintop and live there for a while, winds of defeat or winds of discouragement will try to blow us right back down to the bottom of the mountain. In the early days, beloved, of the automobile, the driver had to get a long road at the next hill in order to get up and over the mountain. The valley is the ground floor for our success. It is the only access to get us up and over the structure of the mountain. In this case, we must run the race through the valley in order to testify how we made it to the mountaintop. Please acknowledge that here are some of the types of valleys that you and I will face in life. There's demonic valleys. This is when you experience the attacks of demons. Jesus can best explain this situation while we are yet in a solitude state of mind. I must inform you all this morning that although we have a living Savior, Satan is also real. And he tries to defeat every child of God in the valley. Notice the onset of Jesus' ministry. <coughs> he was attacked by Herod the Great. He tried to kill him when he was a child. Herod the Great was infested with the demonic activity. How can you kill the creator, our shepherd, who made the creature out of what he created? He was attacked personally by Satan, the chief of all demons during his 40 days and 40 nights of temptation. But in the end, Jesus commanded him to get behind him. If you want to make it through the valley, beloved, Put the past behind you and press forward to a brighter future. He was attacked by demons while hanging on the cross because they courageously communicated from the crowd, come down and save yourself and us. So who is this Jesus? Well, Webster can't explain him. Scientists didn't create him. Doctors never delivered him. Restaurants can't outfeed him. Banks can outfund him. Hematologists can outbleed him. Ophthalmologists can outlook him. History can outlive him. Water can't drown him. Fire can't burn him. And death, beloved, and the grave couldn't hold him. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Disappointed valleys is another. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall because of his sickness. But let's also acknowledge that no sickness comes from God. Jesus always reversed death whenever death was around him. He healed the lady with the issue of blood, Jairus' daughter, Peter's mother-in-law, and raised up Lazarus from the grave. Jesus restored their health. He was a doctor who never lost a patient. Then there are destructive valleys. Job was a prime example of a good man who defeated a destructive situation. Now, although he lost everything that he accumulated plus his children, God in the end gave him double for his trouble. Job was well will well tell you, no matter what God puts me through, even if I can trace it to him, I can still trust him. And so, beloved, the question is to you this morning, what valley are you traveling right now? Is it destructive? Is it disappointed? Is it this morning somehow or another, hallelujah, demonic? Whichever your valley might be that you're traveling right now, know the second point is rejoice in your suffering. Rejoice in your suffering, hallelujah. The word of God says, I will fear no evil. There's a peace, beloved, in the valley. You see, when Jesus was leaving Gethsemane, which was his valley, his disciple Peter was with him, who cut off the ear of, an, of a soldier. And as long as Jesus was with Peter, he feared no evil. He rejoiced because of him. But when they caught Peter at the trial of Jesus, Peter rejected him. And in order to confirm that Jesus was still there with him in spirit, the rooster then preached a sermon in his crow, allowing Peter, hallelujah, to chant uh, to remember Jesus again. Jesus taught Peter while in the valley that the pain others cause should make you grow. And the plan that God has for you should make you glow. In other words, beloved, there should be some type of continence within your character to suggest that you've been in constant contact with our creator when suffering comes about us. Then there should be praise in the valley. Did y'all hear what I said? <laughs> there should be praise. There is peace, but then there ought to be praise in your valley. You might be suffering right now, but that shouldn't stop you, beloved, from singing and praising God, even, hallelujah, in a strange territory. Hallelujah. My final point as I close is, is that you ought to rely on the Savior. Hallelujah. You ought to rely on the Savior. Well, we said to you this morning that if you're going to look at this thing from a perspective of realizing how you're going to get through the valley, you got to recognize your surroundings. Hallelujah. Then you've got to rejoice in your sufferings. And finally, you've got to rely on the Savior. In that Psalm, it says, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. When sheep are going through the valley with the shepherd, the sheep sometimes, because of the darkness, fall into some pits and ditches. And the shepherd would be there with his staff to pull the sheep back into the fold. There should be times, beloved, when the wolves somehow get into the fold to destroy the sheep and the shepherd, hallelujah, would use his rod to fight off the enemy just like David's rod. We have the living word, beloved, and the Savior to carry us through the valley. Let me ask you, Lord, uh, how many are you going through a valley? What kind of a valley that you're going through? I'm so glad this morning that the psalmist let me know that the Lord is my shepherd. I I shall not want. I'm so glad this morning that he makes me lie down in green pastures, that he leads me beside the still waters. I'm so glad this morning that he restores my soul, that he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm so glad this morning that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for he's with me. I'm so glad this morning that he's prepared a table before me 
in the presence of my enemies, and he anoints my head with oil. I'm so glad, beloved, this morning that goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the tents of the wicked. Hallelujah forever. Well, beloved, this morning, if you're going through the valley, hear what it is. They say you're going through it. Don't stop in the valley, but continue through the valley. You know why? Because while you're in the valley, you're not in the valley by yourself. Because I heard from a songwriter that says, there's a lily in the valley, the bright and morning star. There's a lily in the valley, the bright and morning star. Amen, amen, and amen. Won't you take a listen to this song, amen, and let it minister to you, and I'll be right back. All right. There's a lily. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the rose of Sharon this morning. And Jesus is the one that will walk with you because he's the good shepherd that will walk with you through your valley. Let me pause right now and pray 
that there may be somebody out there that have heard this message this morning. Amen. And they are struggling through their valley. They're struggling through life right now. And beloved, I want you to know right now that you're not by yourself because Jesus will walk through the valley with you. Amen. He'll give you the ability, amen, to make it to the other side. And I declare this morning, when you come out of the valley, I think it's like the wilderness. That old song that used to say, how do you feel when you come out the wilderness? as well. Beloved, let me just pray for you right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I'm asking you to be with that one, Father God, who is going through their valleys right now. It might be the shadow of death. It might be a valley of sickness and disease. It might be a valley of disappointment, oh God, and betrayal. Father, whatever their valley might be, oh God, let them know this morning that you are their shepherd and they shall not want. Oh God, let them know that you can lead them down, Lord God, peaceful waters. You can provide for them, Lord God, a, a pasture in which, Lord God, to feast upon. Father, I pray right now, touch that one, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, and let them know that you will get them through their circumstance. You'll get them through this situation, and let that one know who's not saved, Father, that you can be with them right now. All they have to do is accept your son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. All they have to do is cry out to you right now and say, I want to be saved. If they just pray the prayer, dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, and make me whole in Jesus. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, if they prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer this morning, then listen, beloved, I welcome you into the family of God. And if you this morning needed that prayer because you're struggling, listen, beloved, I want you in that chat line to say, thank you, Jesus, because I'm going through. I'm not stopping, but I'm going through my valley. Hallelujah. Amen. Shout with glory to the name of the Lord. Well, we got to close this morning. And before we close, you know, I got to give a shout out to some birthday people this morning. On today, Brother Willie Conley is celebrating his birthday. On tomorrow, the 25th, Michael Douglas and Calvin Tucker will be celebrating their birthdays. On Wednesday, the 27th, hey, Willie Perkins the 4th will be celebrating his birthday. Then on Thursday, the 28th, DeAngela Davis and Leonard Hampton and Janine Byers, all three of them will be celebrating their birthdays. And praise the Lord, on Friday, Aaron Smith will be turning another year older. Amen. Aaron, happy early birthday to you. And then on Saturday, amen, Betty Sanders and Gertrude Cherry will be celebrating their birthdays together. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved, as we prepare to close, and if you didn't get an opportunity, amen, to get those uh, apps that we shared, Givelify or Cash App or Zelle, it will be coming on at the end of a man, this service and broadcast. Well, beloved, it's time for us to go right now. And we look forward to coming into your home, your hotel, your uh, automobile or wherever you might be watching this broadcast. We hope to see you next Sunday, the same time, same station, 1030 a.m. Amen. And look for us to bring a word from the Lord. God bless you. Now may the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. <laughs>